Thank you so much. So I'm going to ask each of you in one minute or less to talk about what inspired this solution. And we can start with you. Of course. Hello, everyone. Baladi was inspired by the ambitious goals of Vision 2030 to improve the quality of life for KSA residents. To achieve these goals, a transformation was needed. And these goals, some of them uh, being among the top of 100 cities around the world to be livable at and increasing the maturity of e-government service to be more than 92%. So Baladi was developed to digitize resident interaction with the government and accelerate the speed for municipal services. However, Baladi did not stop there. It grew into a full ecosystem of livability and lifestyle, allowing residents to co-shape their cities and co-shape their urban landscape and ultimately contributing to the sustainable development goals of their cities. Thank you, Khaled. And Ganesh, your turn. Yes, so OpenSC stands for Open Supply Chain. As the name suggests, we aim to support our customers be much more transparent about their supply chains. The idea started about five years ago in Australia. At the time, one of the leaders of sustainable fishing was accused of fishing in marine reserve protected areas. Now, that's because he was turning off his GPS location data at certain locations. Now, the reason he was doing that is because he didn't want to reveal where he's fishing publicly all the time. That's commercial IP. So they needed a data platform solution that could share sensitive commercial data in a transparent way. And so BCGX and WWF collaborated, and OpenSC was born. And today we look at, we use multiple technologies, including AI, machine learning, and blockchain, to verify sustainability claims at source across multiple commodities beyond seafood, coffee, and others. Thank you. Thank you. And Max, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so as we know, one of the challenges that are facing, facing many countries right now around unemployment and poor working conditions. So we had to explore how mobile technology and the mobile industry could contribute to addressing SDG 8. And this is why we launched the Mobile Innovation Hub Platform for Tomorrow uh, project in Tunisia. Why did we choose Tunisia? Because Tunisia is a, is a shares a lot of the challenges and opportunities that a lot of countries in the region, but also globally, when it comes to employment. It has the rate of unemployment that remains high, in particular um, amongst the youth, but also has a burgeoning digital ecosystem um, with a, a very active um, employment and um, education scene, uh, with 61% of graduate actually being women, and also a, a growing startup scene and it's actually home to the startup that has the largest exit in Africa in the past five years, InstaDeep. So we saw this opportunity to work with GIZ and with the government in, in Tunisia to help look for solutions that will help build um, a digital economy that is human-centric and that is fair. Thank you. Thank you. And this, is great. and this has all been very industry, and let's dive a little bit deeper. So tell us to hear about your characteristics of your solution and why it's game-changing. Of course. Uh, Beledi at the first started as a communication tool for residents to submit their complaints to municipality, receiving more than 3 million requests with a resolution rate more than 90%. Beledi currently evolved to enable and become a smart municipal ecosystem, eliminating the need for physical visits in the municipalities and the physical branches. Uh, in the future, in the near future, Baladi will evolve to become international livability ecosystem and becoming an immersive user experience utilizing emerging technologies and uh, such as digital twin and AI. Uh, also, we are hoping to Baladi to be an international and uh, serve nations around the world. Uh, allow uh, us to show you a video of how Baladi is transforming from a national platform into a global blueprint that can serve nations around the world through the sustainable development goals of the cities.
And Ganesh, over to you. Super. So what makes OpenSC game-changing? Which you'll see in a second. There you go. What makes OpenSC game-changing is that we verify sustainably claims in a data-backed, continuous, and scalable way versus some other existing methods today that might use manual spot checks, you know, random occasions like that. Let's look at coffee supply chains as an example. Other methods today might send someone to the farm. They might be, you know, dressed up, standing out in the farm. Data collection is tedious, it's time consuming, and often it's subjective. OpenSE aims to break that paradigm. We use digital technology to verify sustainability claims, to generate insights in such a way that they are data-backed, they're granular, they're real-time, and they're shareable through our blockchain platform. Now, there are three ways that you can think about how we support our customers and what we do for them. We help them know what's going on in their supply chains. We help them influence behavioral change in their supply chains. And we help them prove their sustainability efforts. Now, again, we're going to look at coffee as, as an example. And this time, let's explore a common claim, a product origin claim, to ensure that all coffee is coming from a single sustainably sourced region. So how do we do it? First, we ingest data. We ingest data that's paper, it's Excel, it's ERP systems. We use multiple technologies, including AI, to capture information at various points in the supply chain and create a traceability map that shows you end-to-end -end where your coffee is coming from. Then we analyze the data. We explore various risk parameters to identify how much of your coffee is at risk of being unverified. Knowing this allows our customers to actually influence their supply chains. Maybe they can support an unsustainable farmer to become sustainable, or maybe they can eliminate product volumes completely. All of this is to ensure that only the sustainably sourced coffee makes it to the end consumer and the claim remains valid. Finally, we expose our data. For customers, it could be internal dashboards. For regulators, it could be our blockchain-backed audit service. Or for consumers, it could be a consumer experience through a QR code, such as one of this on this product. Now let's see what this looks like in practice. And I'm going to show you a bit about our partnership with Nespresso and DR Congo. So first, the coffee is harvested, it's collected, it's bagged into, um, into bags and taken in to coffee collection points. There, an agent writes down how much coffee is gotten by whom. Then they use our OpenSE proprietary app, downloaded onto their personal phones, to capture this information. This is where a lot of the AI and the machine learning comes into play. Along the supply chain, we also use QR code tags to be able to capture information of weight, time, location data. All of this is then uploaded to our blockchain platform, and subsequently it can be shared through QR codes on the product sleeves, such as one of these, or through a consumer experience to consumers out here. Now, if you've got your personal phones, please, I'd, as you just have a look at this and look at what the journey looks like from source to hand for yourself. Now, product origin claims in coffee supply chains is just one example of how we support uh, responsible consumption and production, or SDG 12. We do this for more claims, such as payments, such as uh, climate emissions reduction, and we do this for a lot more uh, commodities as well, including coffee, seafood, palm oil, dairy, and more. And we're very, very excited to grow this a lot more and grow our impact in prosperity, people, planet, and more. Thank you. Thank you. And Max, tell us a bit more about Mobile Innovation Hubs. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. There might be a slide that says that I'm Matt, but I'm actually Max. Matt's had a last minute emergency, so I'm the, uh, I'm the understudy, so I appreciate your patience. Um, but as I explained, the Mobile Innovation Hub in Tunisia, the main purpose was to try and create decent employment and to improve um, the working conditions of, uh, of the youth in the country. And, and the main question was like, how did we manage? And there's, it's just one word here, it's collaboration. Um, it takes a village, as they say. 
Uh, it's not only the GSMA, it's not only GIZ, it's the Ministry of ICT, it's the, um, the DTC in Tunisia, but also mobile operators, the startup ecosystem, everybody working together to address the issue from multiple angles. And there were three key um, priorities that we had for the project. The first one was creating jobs. I mean, it's creating good jobs, but it's creating jobs. Um, and that's the angle that we used is that we supported more than 50 startups, uh, startups and SMEs, I think that the, the, the division is not always very clear, in Tunisia. And we supported them around creating partnerships, but also on raising funding, um, because we truly believe that uh, a striving startup and SME community is one that will be able to create jobs. The other angle is um, on the improvement of work conditions. So we looked at improving health, safety, working conditions, and in doing so, we partnered again. We work with the International Labour Organization with a score program to make sure that we were applying the latest research and knowledge on the topic, as opposed to starting from scratch. And the last element is kind of like almost at the beginning of the chain, I should almost have started with this one. It's on um, digital skills and literacy. Because the reality is we're having a lot of youth, but also, not so young people who are coming online for the first time and we cannot not support them with the skills that they need to make sure that they make the most of the internet but also in a secure manner. So we used our MIST toolkit, the uh, mobile internet skills training toolkit, a bit of a mouthful, but has been trial and tested in, in dozens of countries now to uh, work with two mobile operators and make sure that those coming online for the first time were doing it in a in a secure and um, with, with the help that they need. So this is, these were the three um, key um, achievements and focuses of the project, but I will leave you with the words from, uh, from people in, uh, in Tunisia. I should have a short video. La GSMA a une autre nabacha de mise en contact avec les opérateurs mobiles pour développer des partenariats. Grâce à la GSMA, nous avons eu la possibilité de participer au Mobile World Congress de Barcelone en 2022. Ça nous a permis d'ouvrir en fait beaucoup de portes. Non seulement ça nous a permis de gagner en notoriété, mais également ça nous a permis de rencontrer beaucoup de personnes, de voir et rencontrer de nouvelles personnes qui ont fini par aboutir par la suite à des partenariats, mais également à une levée de fonds. Au niveau de notre équipe, nous sommes passés de 5 psychologues à 15 psychologues. Nous sommes passés d'une moyenne de 50 consultations par mois à plus de 300 consultations par mois. Nous avons également réalisé une augmentation de notre chiffre d'affaires de 100%. Nous avons parlé le nombre d'utilisateurs qui font ce Donc, nous avons fait chaque jour. وحتى النمبر ديال المدسان اليوم نجمو نقولوا اللي هو قاعد يزيد بشويه بشويه خاطر بدينا بكلكو مدسان جينيراليست اليوم عندنا اكثر من 200 مدسان Ladies and gentlemen a round of applause for our presenters here today. Thank you.